Hola, bienvenidos a la clase de español. Today's topic is the preterite tense of cargar sar verbs, the preterite tense of verbs ending in car, gar, and zar. Now, the first thing to know about these verbs is that verbs ending in car, gar, and sar are regular in the preterite tense. Their stems and their endings sound regular. And if we think about the sound of the verbs when we conjugate, this is what we do to conjugate a verb in the preterite tense. We take that last sound, the AR, ER, or IR, the R, ER, or ear sound, we get rid of it and we're left with the stem. And we take the sound of the stem and then we add our preterite tense endings. To illustrate how these verbs are regular since they sound regular, I'm going to spell them using the international phonetic alphabet, and that's going to be between two slashes. So you know that that's not the actual spelling, but that's a representation of how the word is pronounced. So if we take a car verb, sacar, which means to take out, as in to take out the trash, I might ask the question, sacaste la basura? And if the person that I asked had indeed taken out the trash, they would respond, si, la saqué. Now, notice that we conjugated that verb by taking the stem, sac, and adding some preterite tense endings. And that's going to be true for all of the forms. It's just going to be sac plus e, aste, o, amos, astes, or aron. However, the thing that happens with car verbs as well as gar and sar verbs is that they require a spelling change in order to maintain the pronunciation. So since Spanish has some very specific spelling rules and pronunciation rules, we're going to need to make some changes to the spelling in order to accurately represent how the word is pronounced. The good news is that we're only going to have to do this once, because for spelling changes in the preterite tense, this only affects the yo form. Before I tell you the spelling changes for car verbs, gar verbs, and sar verbs, I want to go over the preterite tense endings for ar verbs, because all these, car, gar, and sar, they're all ar verbs. So our ar verb endings in the preterite tense are e, aste, o, amos, astes, aron. And I'm just going to have those left up uh, as we talk about the car verbs, gar verbs, and sar verbs, so we can look at and refer back to them throughout the video. Now, um, are you sure that's not going to fall down? Because I don't want that to hit. What? <laughs> See, uh, can we get that a little bit back back up there? Maybe, um, maybe hammer it in or something. All right, great, thanks. Now notice with those endings, they start with one of three vowels: either the vowel e, the vowel a, or the vowel o. And those vowels are important because it's those vowels that are causing the, these spelling changes to happen. Let's start off with car verbs. The reason why we have to have a spelling change with car verbs is because the letter C in Spanish can be pronounced one of two ways. If the next letter after the C is a consonant, an A, an O, or a U, we're going to pronounce the letter C as K in Spanish. On the other hand, if the next letter is an E or an I, we're going to pronounce the letter C in Latin America as S or in Spain as TH. When we take a car verb like sacar, and drop our ending, our stem is sac. It has a k sound. So when we conjugate, we want to maintain that k sound. We want the yo form to be sake. However, based on spelling and pronunciation rules, if I were to just keep the stem as sac and add my accented e to that, that would change the pronunciation of the letter c to s. So in order to maintain the k pronunciation, we need to change the C to a Q-U. And again, that only happens in the yo form because the yo form is the only place where we have the vowel E right after the stem. So a verb chart for sacar would have the stem sac in all the forms plus the preterite tense endings, but the stem sac would have to be spelled S-A-Q-U in the yo form, making the yo form S-A-Q-U-E with an accent, sake. Notice that doesn't change the pronunciation. We don't pronounce the U. The U is just in there as a placeholder uh, between the Q and the E in order to keep that K sound. The rest of the forms are spelled just as you would expect. Sacaste, sacó, sacamos, sacastes, sacaron. We have a similar thing going on for gar verbs. Just like the letter C, the letter G has two pronunciations in Spanish. If the G comes before a consonant, an A, an O, or a U, it's pronounced G. If the letter G comes before an E or an I, it's pronounced H, like an English H. As we look at the verb chart, it's just the yo form that has the vowel E that's going to come after my G sound. So 
In order to maintain the pronunciation of G, we have to have a spelling change. And we're going to change the G to a GU in the yo form. So for a verb like llegar, to arrive, it's going to be conjugated llegué, but in order to spell that, it would have to be L-L-E-G-U-E with an accent. The rest of the forms keep the original spelling of the stem, since the vowel in the ending is either an A or an O, and G followed by A or O is pronounced G. Llegaste, llegó, with an accent. Llegamos, llegasteis, llegaron. The letter Z is slightly different, because the letter Z has only one pronunciation in Spanish. Well, actually that's not quite true. In Latin America, it's pronounced S, but in Spain, the letter Z is pronounced F. Now, wherever you are in the Spanish-speaking world, there's only one way that Z is pronounced. It's not pronounced differently before different letters. However, you would only see the letter Z before a consonant, an A, an O, or a U. We don't spell any words with a Z followed by an E or an I. And that might be partly because there's already another letter that makes the same sound as a Z does, a S, before an E or an I. And if you think back to when we talked about car verbs, it's the letter C. Therefore, in order to maintain that pronunciation and follow our Spanish spelling rules, we're going to change the Z to a C in the yo form. So a verb like almorzar, to have lunch, would be conjugated like this. In the yo form, almorce, and that's going to be spelled A-L-M-O-R-C-E with an accent. The rest of the forms keep the Z in the stem, almorzaste, almorzó, almorzamos, almorzasteis, almorzaron. Now this is also a good place to remind you that while almorzar is a shoe verb in the present tense, there are no shoe verbs in the preterite, so we don't have to worry about any of those shoe verb stem changes. So that's the theory on why we have to have these spelling changes. But as a recap, here's what you have to remember uh, when conjugating cargar sar verbs in the preterite tense. For car verbs, change the C to a QU. For gar verbs, change the G to a GU. And for sar verbs, change the Z to a C. For all those verbs, you only make that change in the yo form, only when the next vowel is an E. You don't do it anywhere else, only in the yo form. Here are some commonly used cargar sar verbs in Spanish for you to know. For the car verbs, buscar, to look for. Marcar, to mark. It's also used to mean to dial. Pescar, to fish or to go fishing. Practicar, to practice. Sacar, to take out. And tocar, to play music or to touch. Some gar verbs, apagar, to put out as in a fire, or to turn off as in the light. Fregar, to wash. Jugar, to play games. Llegar, to arrive. Pagar, to pay. Pegar, to paste, or to attach. And regar, to water. For some sar verbs, abrazar, to hug or to embrace. Almorzar, to have lunch. Comenzar, to begin. Empezar, to start. Lanzar, to throw or to pitch. And organizar, to organize. When conjugating cargar sar verbs in the preterite tense, Remember that they're regular, they sound normal, but when writing them, you need to make some spelling changes in the yo form only. For car verbs, the C changes to a QU, gar verbs, G to GU, and sar verbs, Z to C. Again, that's only in the yo form, no other forms in the preterite tense. Gracias por ver este video. Adios.